Greetings from Iowa. Had a good road trip up till now. We've had our bumps and bruises, I guess, along the way, but it's been a good trip. Our first stop in Iowa was in Lamar's, the self-proclaimed ice cream capital of the world. Wells started out as a full dairy, milk, cheese, ice cream, and slowly turned so they're now just doing Blue Bunny ice cream. It was a quirky little museum. But fun nonetheless. We had a short story on the history of ice cream, along with some displays talking about the business, how it grew from next to nothing up to what it is today. I don't remember the actual numbers, but I do recall something about they could fill several Olympic-sized swimming pools with ice cream, with the amount of ice cream they make every year now. neat little shop and a fun stop since we were driving through the area and not sure I would plan it out of the way but spun nonetheless And of course, we had to go downstairs and try out some ice cream while we were there. I think it's mandatory. Bottom is salted caramel craze and top is peppermint stick. Nummy. Right? From there we headed on to Boone, Iowa. Back in 1979, Grandpa Knight, Dad, me and two of my brothers went back to Boone for a family reunion. Wanted to go back and visit some of the sites that Grandpa Knight took us to and see if we could find out more of the Knight family history from there. It was a neat visit and if we had more time the library has a genealogy section that looked like it had some really good information. So here at the Sacred Heart Cemetery in Boone, Iowa, we have found the headstone for Catherine, the first wife of George Henry Knight, my great-grandfather. So this is the Sacred Heart Cemetery in Boone, Iowa. We've done our best, but we cannot find great grandma or great grandpa's headstones. So we're here at Linwood Cemetery in Boone, Iowa. This is the gravestone of Thomas Wills and Jane Wills. Thomas Wills 
is my great great grandfather. So that was a childhood home of Grandpa Knight. Between the ages of four and nine, if my notes serve me correctly. Kate Shelley High Bridge. The one closest to us was built in 1901, same year Grandpa was born. And it was the longest and highest dual trestle train track in America until they built the new one on the other side with the concrete supports. It's now five feet taller and a little bit longer than the original Kate Shelley High Bridge. So this is Kate Shelley Park in Moingana, Iowa. When I was here in 79, there were several train cars still on the track. I think there was an engine here. I think you could actually go inside the building. And there's other train artifacts all around here. It's now nothing more than a vacant lot with the one building. But that building is the original train depot. And from my understanding is Kate Shelley actually worked in there for a short period of time. It was fun being back in Boone. And it was neat to share that experience with Sonia. We were also able to recreate some of the pictures that I took back in 1979. While we were there, we were camped at Ledges State Park. It was a neat little park. Stream running through it. Several sandstone cliffs in the area. It was fun to hike. I didn't need to, but I wore water shoes and walked right down the middle of the water. We also saw these really neat dragonflies with very greenish blue bodies and black wings. Never seen anything like that before. Had a fun day of exploring the park. The road drives right through the park and the creek crosses over the road in several places. Different and fun. On our way out of Iowa, we drove down through Winterset. Had to stop at the John Wayne Museum and birthplace. Neat little museum. The bookcase was actually John Wayne's bookcase. You can see him leaning on it in the picture there. I was intrigued that John Wayne valued safety and security issues more than a fancy flary car, so he drove a station wagon. I also find it kind of interesting that the museum is based on the fact that John Wayne was born in Winterset, which he was. 
but he lived there for only 28 months before the family moved out of town. Still a neat museum. They're in the process of adding on to it right now. A lot of old original wardrobe that he wore in movies and props from different movies were there. Brings back memories of Saturday mornings with dad. Seemed like every Saturday growing up there was a John Wayne movie on. Dad sure loved his John Wayne movies. And this is the actual house he was born in. John Wayne was 13 pounds at birth. Poor mom. So the house is original. All the furnishings inside are period correct, but not original to the Wayne family. Pretty small home. There's a almost funny piece of Hollywood magic. That cannon was used in the movie, The Alamo, but it's a movie prop. It's actually made of wood with a metal liner. With the metal liner, they were able to shoot pyrotechnics out of it, but the cannon itself is actually wood. And this is a freedom rock. A gentleman in Iowa has gone around to all counties in Iowa and has painted a similar rock with similar themes on it. That's some talent to be able to create such good artistry on a very uneven surface. wall there, we had to go to the quilt museum for Sonya. And that was the Madison County Courthouse that you saw just prior to us going to the building museum. For all you quilters out there, there'll be more on the museum in the next quilt store video which will be coming soon. Until next time.